Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Fight Site interview. Today, uh, you might know him from the previous interview. You might know him from the fact that he's kind of an all-around uh, Chad on uh, Twitter, and he's just the man. You know, he's also was a ranked flyweight and he's kind of really good at the whole fighting thing. We got Sam Koski again. What's up? Uh, it's really late, and we're both talking, so I'm happy. <laughs> um, anyway, before we start, obviously, make sure you go check out thefightsite.com. Amazing articles, amazing content. Uh, check us out on Patreon. Support us. It really does help us. You get access to the Discord. You get access to a bunch of other exclusive content you wouldn't normally. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell, which actually notifies you when you get when a new video is posted. So you'll never miss a video. You'll never miss an interview. You'll never miss a podcast. Uh, like on the video, it really does help. Comment on the video, it really does help. Share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe on Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Leave a five-star rating, it also really helps. Uh, also make sure you check out hyperbrandfly.com. Uh, at the bottom of the Fight Site website, you'll see a link. We get 10% uh, of anything that you buy, so it really does help us a lot when you do that. Also, uh, any links that we share, please check it out. Their jujitsu. Their jujitsu gear, gi and no gi stuff is really great. And their lifestyle brand, sweatpants, sweatshirts, all that good stuff. Check it out. Really would appreciate it. That's up. All right. Let's talk about something that's actually really, really important and something that is getting a lot of attention. Uh, fighter pay, unions, all these th these topics. We briefly discussed it on the first interview we did. But I kind of, you know, you, you mentioned to me that you had your own stories about a name that's not brought up as much. So... <laughs> Let's talk about that first of all. Uh, what are your what were your experiences with I guess matchmakers to start, and we can kind of touch base and go from there. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, we're probably going to be mostly criticizing the UFC here, but I don't think they are really isolated. They're just the top of the pyramid and should be doing the best for fighters, and it's kind of standard procedure if you ask me. But, I mean, I've had a couple of different experiences where, you know, the promotions I was fighting for just kind of flexed their muscle and, like, we're at the I'm – at, I'm at their win, basically. So, it was like uh, – the first one was – so, I just lost the title in Bellator to Eduardo Dantes. And so, they already have – the way at that time they were doing the tournament structure – and then, so I won the first tournament, I became the champion, and then I basically had to wait to defend my title till someone else won the next tournament. And they gave, you, they gave me a couple fights in the meantime, two fights while the other guy fought, the challengers fought three times throughout, throughout the tournament, lost to Dantes, and then that was the only fight I had that year. I lost, so I didn't make my win bonus, and uh, that was like April, and it was coming up towards the end of the year, it's like October, November, so I'm like, and I haven't heard any offers or any like hey, we're thinking about putting you on a card here or there. Uh, and so, like, I I had my manager, me and my manager, like, proactively asked them, like, hey, are you planning on putting us on a card this year? Because this is my full-time job now, and I've only fought once, and I didn't win. So I'm kind of, like, what, 15 grand for the year if I, if, I, if I don't get another fight. And the way I had my pay structured in that was, like, if I won the title, I was going to be at a certain tier of money. And then if I, lo if I lost... I dropped down. So my money went down. So my, so I was making 15 and 15 at the time, and I was try and then I dropped down to 9 and 9 based on uh, not defending the title. So then, so I'm asking for another fight in December or whenever, and they say, we're kind of booked, but we do have a show in Atlantic City, which is close to where I was living in Philly, and we can put you on the card, but... Our budget's kind of running low, so we can't pay you what your contract says. So you don't have to take this fight, but if you need to take a fight, we'll pay you seven and seven. And I'm like, I really don't have a choice. Like, I'm going to either have to go get a, a different job or take this fight. I took the fight for 2000 or 2000 less than I was supposed to in my contract, but I agreed to those terms because I didn't really have a choice. I lost a split decision to Anthony Leone. I was that was so I went six and zero, won the tournament, uh, had two non-title defenses, lost the title to Eduardo Dantes, who's one of the best Bellator guys that's been for for years and years, and then lost a split decision to Leone, who ended up fighting for the title shortly after, and then they released me on like two days after Christmas or something, and I was like, oh, man. It, it's ridiculous. How kind of them to wait till after Christmas. Yeah, yeah. 
So, you know, they just kind of put you in these positions where you're, you're in debt, you're in a desperate spot and they're not, they're not even playing by the rules we agreed to. They're like, Oh, you're desperate. I'm going to take advantage of this. Here we go. Um, so that was the, that was, so, and I had a great, great relationship with Bellator up until that, that's that point. Uh, right. So, and then they released me kind of out of nowhere. I was expecting to be in the next tournament to, you know, if I win that tournament, I get another shot at the title and whatever. So, uh, I took a huge pay cut, dropped, that's when I dropped the flyweight because flyweight wasn't available in Bellator. Had a handful of fights for very little money outside, won the RFA title. Then I got signed to the UFC on 10 days notice to fight Jorgensen. I remember uh, that fight. That was a great fight. For what? For people who don't know, go watch that fight. That was, a, that was awesome. One of my favorites. But, but, uh, so I, so I took that fight, won, won in a, in a exciting fight. So after the fight, we are like at the hotel lobby bar hanging out. I'm like ecstatic. Like my goal was to like make it to the UFC. College wrestling, I didn't, never made it to the NCAA Division One National Tournament. I was one match away, two years in a row. Missed it. And then, so I was kind of like, I just want to make it to the UFC. That was like one of my primary goals. So I finally got in. I want to be the guy who I've been watching forever, who was ranked top 10. I was thrilled. So we're at the bar, and Sean Shelby is the matchmaker for the flyweights at the time. And he's like, I mean, everyone's drinking, so we're feeling loose. And he's like, man, great fight. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, taking it on short notice. It was really amazing. You looked great. He's like, I can't make you any promises. But, you know, if there's, if there's any opponents that you would potentially be interested in being matched up with, let me know. Again, I'm not making you promises, but, you know, you can throw them out there. It can't hurt. And so I'm like, all right, cool. That's awesome, Sean. Thank you so much. So me and my manager discuss it over the next week and uh you know we're like hey here's here's a couple names we were thinking about after we talked and i don't know if he was like drinking too much and didn't remember the conversation or it was just but he wrote back uh you'll fight who i say when i say period <laughs> and I'm like, uh, <laughs> you, you ask you ask us shit. oh my god <laughs> okay all right, all right. sorry um, okay. but then, but okay. then, <laughs> So then shortly after that, uh, uh, they gave me another offer to fight actually one of the guys that I, of the names I gave, Josh Sampo. And um, it, was, it was pretty close, though. It was like seven weeks after, seven weeks after that fight, or maybe like there was like a one-week break, and they called me. It was seven weeks from there. And I had just, so I just did a like really long training camp for my RFA fight. It was a high-altitude five-round fight, so I trained a long time for that. And then I had the UFC, the UFC debut three weeks to the day after that fight. And now mm -hmm. they're offering me another fight in seven weeks, which is great. But I'm like, you know, hey, I, I love the matchup. Like, is there any way we could just push it back a couple weeks or a month to the next month's card or whatever? Just because, you know, I've been right. like training nonstop and like my body's a little beat up and, you know. And he's like, he's like, you don't have to take it. He's like, but if you don't, we'll put you, uh, we'll put you in on an undercard in a, on a Brazil, against a Brazilian in Brazil on Fuel TV. And I was Jesus. like, and I'm like, oh, all right, man. Like it was just, I just asked like, fine, I'll take the fight. You know, like, so they just, they just flex and show you, you have no, you have no negotiating power here. And I was, I'm on the minimum contract. What am I going to do? Like, I, I, there's a million guys waiting to take my spot if I cause too much trouble. So you're really at their whim. And that's kind of the problem in general. Right. It's Jesus. Okay. So there's a I lot. Think, I don't think that was anything like super egregious. They're just like showing you, yo. It's such a, it's such target. a, like, it's such a pull your, it, forgive the colorful language. It's a pull your dick out and slam it on the table mo move where they're just like, just so you're aware. Fuck you. <laughs> For no reason, like you, like you said, you were like, I was just asking, and also you told me, that's very odd. And it, it, it kind of just fits in with the narrative of just like, there's no, they don't give a shit about you guys at all, which is yeah. true. Yeah, they, they, they play a ruthless game that's about business, and if we don't do the same thing back, we're going to get screwed forever, which is, I think, 
just bringing more attention and discussing what what options we have to like collectively bargain or right. pass the Ali Act or whatever whatever we can we could we could do to enhance our ability to negotiate a, a better place for us. Uh, for sure, that's what we're trying to do. You know. So it's, it's interesting. So uh, before before I, I re we really head off into to I guess a discussion of union or association or how we could do that. We we do need. I mean, we got everyone talks about the Ali Act. I guess as the first step in a way. Um, a lot of people at least talk about it like that. Like, what do yeah. you think would be what, what we know what the benefits are for at least the top level athletes of the LE Act, right? The top guys in boxing really, really do make a lot of money. Uh, but I think that some people ignore the, the flaws in the LE Act where people who are not necessarily at the top also kind of get screwed. Uh, is, is the passing of the LE Act enough, at least for now, I guess, in your opinion? Uh, I mean, I, I don't really understand exactly what the implications would be if it did. You know, I, I mean, I might I might have to ask more questions than I have sure. answers to. But sure. uh, I'm not sure exactly how it would work, right? It was like uh, originally to ensure that for a while there was a variety of purposes, but essentially, so like the promoter couldn't be the manager and uh, you know and have a conflict of interest where they're they can set up their fighters or just what what whatever they're they're right. trying to everything and can manipulate everyone to make make the most for them so there was like some precautions put in for for the fighters so people couldn't do that right but then i think there was all there's also like i heard chael talk about it at one point where it would mean like see I, this is what i mean i don't know what the implications would be like is this going to mean there's like a required separate independent body that that I does think the, does the rankings and then there's you that know, like, I think would be part of it, but see, like, like I don't think it. I mean, with the rankings, I think it's just it's it's the different organizations that do the rankings, right? Each of the WBC, WBO, IBO, uh, IBA, whatever it might be, and WBA, they all have their independent rankings and kind of like that's where you get in like in trouble, where like you have the WBC and the WB or and the WBA both saying these are your number one uh, contenders and they'll strip you if you don't fight. Like that's where you get yeah. to those. And that's kind of like some people detract and say like, yeah, that's going to be issues. You're not going to be able to have everyone in one place. So the best don't really fight the best, but also fighters have no, <laughs> no agency really. So. And it, I think, I, I think there's also like, given that like an independent body is, has the title and they are doing the rankings, it ensures that the promoter just can't take the matchups they want. Like the UFC right. rankings, for example, like you don't, they they can they can give anyone on that list a title that they want. The yep. rankings are essentially meaningless. They're just for public to debate about, right? Right. I mean, there's not really any implications to what the number next to your name is. For sure, in, in and that, that's part of the problem. Yeah. And also, the people who are making the rankings are completely. <laughs> we the people have talked about who is on those lists, and it's really not good. Um, so. Unions and, and associations really are uh, are the real, I think, point. And I was talking to uh, Cosmo uh, Alexander, uh, Alexander, and he he was saying that he thinks there's one problem with the he loves the idea of a union, right? And he's like, it would be great for fighters, but he said he personally experienced this also, and he says this is what he sees being the problem is that. When you have people who, yeah, at the top, you're making a couple million, like guys like Jones, guys like Mazda, they can afford to sit out. You're making, like you said, you like were forced to take a fight for 7-7, seven, seven, which was two less than you were supposed to get because you just had no choice. And he said he sees that being a really big obstacle to a union. You're in camps. You're in, you, you know, you're training with fighters who are currently in the UFC too, I'm sure. And what's your gauge of that kind of thought process? Do you really think that would be a major obstacle and issue right off the bat? Well... I mean, I think one of the potential benefits from being able to collectively bargain is that we could maybe set like a minimum, a minimum standard pay. For sure. But sure. certainly, but yeah, it, it, I don't know. I think there's plenty of benefits to getting together and, 
and like using our our collective power to negotiate but i have no idea how everyone's going to come together because it's cutthroat everyone is going to climb over everyone and so like it, it's hard for like especially lower guys to try to push for more because you have no you have no chance they'll cut you and cut and bring in the next guy do you oh, think it would take like do you think it would take like a, a a really what do you think of the idea of a really large camp just saying for, like from all their fighters going we're done you, we're, we are supporting a union and kind of like getting these large camps with these very highly ranked fighters and that way you can kind of get a solid chunk of the raw at least the ranked roster to kind of do that like as an idea is that something that <laughs> i'm not <laughs> i am I'll, trying I'll, to. I'll, you, I'll, I, you get what i'd I mean. be willing to watch and see how it plays out i would hope i'd be rooting for them but i don't i don't i don't know that's what i mean i don't know if it would work or not i have no idea i distinctly remember aka did something like that with um with their with their image rights in uh, uh with regard to the UFC video game and they cut the whole AKA team for like a couple days or something like that it was that so that's what i'm saying like i, I don't know if it's, if one camp would even be enough that's the thing like one big camp like imagine like uh Jackson Wink or, or like uh EFT or TriStar for really like you know this the name's on your shirt i can see it so uh it would it's 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 kind of in a situation where everyone's kind of screwed so badly that having that ability is it really just going to come down? It's probably just going to come down to like Jones, Masvidal, and a couple other like just big name fighters saying to the UFC. That's probably what'll come down to, you know? Yeah, but I, again, I don't know how. I don't know how that will benefit everyone. Mm -hmm. Like I certainly think it's gonna. The, Sadly, I predict the way this is likely to end, to end is that these guys each individually get some better deals. Right. And everything else is business as usual, like it has been anytime someone is, you know, held out for a little more money or more, more ability to negotiate different terms of anything. You know? Right. It's going to have to go to, it's going to have to go to like Congress, similar to the Ali Act. I don't think there's any other way because... But like, like even the Ali Act, like so in so in boxing, like uh, if a fight wants to get made, different promotions can like bid on right. and like you can get different offers from different shows. But like we talked about this a little on Twitter, uh, like there's no no MMA promotions are making money except the UFC, right? Right. I think you're right. Yeah, I remember that thread. So who's gonna bid? No no one <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> You basically have Bellator with Viacom backing them right now. You have one fighting championship who claims to have two billion, uh, 20, trillion, 20 billion viewers or something like that. And an endless pool of money, supposedly, even though they're like really hurting for money. Uh, yeah. PFL, which is, I have no idea who funds them. Yeah, all, all these shows definitely have to be losing huge amounts of money. Except for, you're right. Except for the USC, that's that's that's. And I feel like I feel like damn. another uh, another obstacle would be just somehow finding out how to make MMA profitable, like globally, right? And, and not just like a little bit above, like a tiny bit of profit margin, like a huge margin. Like UFC is huge, fucking. They're making hundreds of times more than any other show, right? It's like it's like not absurd. even close. The. I happen to have like put thought into it. Right now, I don't think there's any any TV deals that will allow any any organization to gain the notoriety or even come close to the UFC. The UFC is so well established and so big, it's just not possible. The only way they're gonna do it is free content, and they're gonna lose money for a while. Like yeah. throw it on YouTube, partner with YouTube, get on YouTube as an official YouTube sports league. So they won't have any issues with advertising revenue. They won't have any issues with co like like uh, uh, strikes against them for violence or whatever it is, or I don't know. Uh, and throw you set of YouTube. We, you can make for make a YouTube sports leagues. Get your own basketball leagues. Go, yeah, just pitch it to them. I don't know. I don't know if there's any other way, but because um, that's no other way to get your name out there. There's no other way to show the fighters and get as many views as possible. I don't yeah. know. 
I think you're right. Um, uh, going back to um, your time in the UFC, you were there actually from the shift from pre-Reebok to post-Reebok. Um, one, did that hurt you personally, financially? And two, if so, yes, no, how much or whatever? Like, And three, in your experience with other fighters, how badly were fighters generally hurt there? Um, it was, it didn't affect me too much, uh, personally. Uh, I had already had five fights in the UFC when Reebok went into effect. So I started on the second tier. Mm -hmm. If I would have started at 2,500, which was like zero to five Zufa fights, 2,500 per fight, mm -hmm. I would have taken a little bit of a loss. But at five, I was like right around what I was getting on sponsors on my own. But I know people who were making way more in sponsors, like, like guys like Elias Theodoro who hustle. And, like, he, I think he was making significantly more than that on his own before they cut it out. And, and I know other people, too, who the, the guys who were, like, really hustling and really had, like, a lot of, like, solid local sponsors that they knew behind them seemed to be the guys that were making the most. Nobody was getting, like, deals with huge companies that they had no real relationship with. But if you mm -hmm. hustled and, like, support, like represented local businesses and were friends with everyone in your area like you could bring in a lot of money and and give them some publicity and uh you know, that all changed but personally it didn't it didn't really affect my paycheck uh but i know people who it did pretty significantly yeah elias i know is a is a huge hustler i think that guy is everywhere <laughs> Just, i love it like i, I love elias He's a great dude uh he, he, I know he was making a movie or something like that. I saw that, that, that I think back anymore, <laughs> but it's done. I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I, was he was, he was making a movie. I saw like it's, uh, I forgot what the name of it was. I don't, I don't remember the name of it. I remember they were, they were doing a GoFundMe and then they ended up getting like a donor who like basically sponsored whatever the rest of it was. Uh, sponsored by Pert Shampoo, which I yeah, only, oh yeah. which I, I love. I was got Pert Plus, yeah. <laughs> I actually that's how I got to that's how I actually started talking to him because I just like responded like I remember using that when I was like 10 years old going to like summer camp and we just started like talking and then he was like oh, fuck it let's become friends and he follows me I'm like first fighter to follow me I'll take it I remember I was like a kid then so that was that was like I remember just having that I was like okay and then it's just sponsor after sponsor after sponsor for him and that's important also because He's managed to keep those sponsors now, also too. Like he's keeps he's got a ton of sponsors even while he was still in the UFC. He couldn't talk about them the week of the fight. Right. Um, but he's uh, like a he's like a social media professional. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> we would make fun of him whenever he would come to TriStar because, like, you know, like before <laughs> training, everyone's warming up. He's like on the phone working. After training, he's on the tre treadmill jogging on the phone like every single day. We're like, this dude just, but he, but it was working for him. Hey, listen, he 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 set himself up. Can't can't argue with that. Um, yeah, not everyone is like that. I don't think I could do that. I was gonna say this is, uh, for you for someone like you. It's not really your personality so much. So that kind of like comes down to like, and if you really think about it, he's doing another job. If yeah. you really like look at it, and he's forced to do this because the UFC just doesn't pay. And to illustrate that, we're going to take a look at the one of the fights that you had against, you know, two-time title challenger John Dodson, where at UFC 187, you got 19 to show and John Dodson got 20 to show. Mind you, you were at the time 3-1 and one in the UFC with your only loss being to Formiga, who was the number one ranked flyweight before coming to the UFC, ranked yeah. in the top five at the time. Really good fight. Awesome scrambles. Uh, then you beat Tim Elliott, fought John Dodson, went to decision with him. I think at the time it was you and was that – were you the, only, the first person to go to decision with him? Out, uh, Tim Elliott went to decision with him. Yeah. So uh, – and. Uh, well, that was before the UFC, but so it's kind of insane. The the flyweights alone were you guys were completely mishandled, mistreated within the UFC mistreatment mechanism. Extra, but it, it goes to show. And until 
you you were saying like you were gonna have to take another job and you luckily you didn't I guess but also then you took a pay cut and it was really bad but what what do you think it would do for the sport alone in terms of attracting I guess more athletes more high level talents and more stuff like that because right now what's the incentive the only incentive is to be become one of the very few superstars right and then the the the, the uh, appeal really is to be able to live a lifestyle you like and mm. eke by a living which is fine I, i'm i'm okay doing that but i also think we, we deserve to have more power at the table. And oh, 100%. The thing, is, the thing is, talking about like the UFC paying me 19 and Dodson 20 for that fight, which was a number one contender fight. Dodson fought for the title after that. Right. Uh, like, we're criticizing the UFC, but no one is paying as much as the UFC, really. Very, right. And only in very, very uh, rare other circumstances will you get like a big offer. And usually that's because you made a name in the UFC and now you got released and they want to build off that name mm -hmm. uh i mean like, did, did that help you i don't know how to unravel this whole thing because like i think it's it's at least this aspect has gotten better like even like a couple years ago maybe like five or more years ago most people i know that i would just randomly talk to didn't know the sport was called mixed martial arts they thought the sport was called ufc <laughs> so like you know that alone is like a huge like no one's going to pay attention to the other shows if right. they think sport is called UFC. So, I don't know. Um, did it help you when you left the UFC? Did it help you when you were fielding other offers? Um, I, I think so. I mean, I got more than I was before the UFC, so yeah. That's good. I, okay. And I and I had a couple organizations bidding for for me so it, it worked out I, the initial offer wasn't as high as the ufc but it got up to just higher than the ufc when i left with uh, acb good first of all good uh secondly uh you deserve more third uh when when it comes to the uh it's actually interesting i want to ask you about the you you know it's an international promotion you have to travel there with your coaches and with whoever and you got a, the hotel and stuff like that do they have similar uh accommodations and or amenities to the UFC for travel? Because I know the UFC pays for uh, one corner and you get one hotel room. Anything extra you want to, you have to get, you have to pay for on your own. Is, is it the it's, same with these other promotions? Yeah, this is standard. So like we talk about how like the UFC, the UFC has like all the power in their contract, but every right. contract across the board is pretty much the same. Like every promotion you sign like a decent multi-fight deal with, the contract is essentially the same. You know, mm -hmm. like as far as what leverage you have, or, you know, mm -hmm. like they can release you. They they can release you at any time. They have rights to every kind of everything that they that they film and all the footage they take, and you don't get anything from any of it. And there's there's sponsorship restrictions in a lot of them. Anything that competes with the people that are sponsoring the actual event, you're not allowed to use. And there's a lot of conditions, and it's like it's across the board like that. So if the UFC changes, you think it'll we'll see everywhere uh, everywhere else should probably change too. It's just really that's why the focus has to be on the UFC because they're the big, they're the top, they're the top of the food chain. So yeah, and, hopefully and once so, they change, so there's just there's just like uh, like people on social media media criticize everyone and they're like you signed the contract why you you should be happy with the contract you signed it if you didn't want to do it you didn't have to. And there's some truth to that, but there's. We have no leverage, and and the UFC, even, as much as we're complaining about that, they're paying more than everyone else for the most part. Yep. Not, not, not the most like percentage of their revenue or whatever. That's why they right. should. Do, that's why we're holding them to the highest standard because they're the one who's making all the money. So mm -hmm. that's why that's why the criticism has to be directed them. But honestly, everyone is pretty it's much the same. So but it's actually interesting because Bellator supposedly now I think does pay around fifty percent of their revenue to the fighters, which. Isn't a lot, but that's more of a function of Bellator not having that much revenue, I think. Yeah. So then it's much more understandable, right? That's right. That's what I'm saying. Like, we need to make MMA, like, profitable globally so we can try to – like, because if we, if we get more leverage in the UFC, mm -hmm. the UFC could just cut their roster down and then 
have a, essentially have the same expenditure, but everyone else has nowhere else to go. You right. I, mean? I feel like every, MMA across the globe has to be be raised up, and uh, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like running a promotion is not an easy job. It's, I think it's very hard to make money. Do you think that um, someone asked me? This is a very casual question, so I'm not from me. I'm gonna make this very clear. It's not my question, but my cousin asked me to ask this because um, he knew I was interviewing fighters about fighter pay. He's like, "Why don't fighters like get together and make their own promotion?" Right? <laughs> That's what he asked me to ask. So, like you said, it's very difficult to run a promotion. It's very hard to become profitable. What are some of the very straight, like obvious obstacles that you would see from fighters being able to huge, do that. Huge investment. Where, where are we there getting all the? There it is. Are we getting the money for the for all the the uh, the promotional <laughs> stuff, the lighting, the the. We need a TV deal. Like, once you get a TV deal that's going to pay you a lot of money and investment, that, and and you have some money to pay the to to pay the fighters and make decent offers, then you can get. Then you can get something going, but how do you get that going? Does that answer your question, Sam? <laughs> but the, and then there's, I mean, like, they're, they're like, like what, like what we were talking about with one, uh, right? Like they have what from what I don't, I don't know all the details, but they, from what it seems, they have very large investment, right? But at least from what we know, they are with all that investment and bringing in and paying, they're paying some fighters pretty well. They're losing money, from what I hear, and a lot of yeah. Them. So oh yeah, it's a lot. They're losing a lot of money. This is what uh, I, I don't I don't have the answers to this. This is why I was asking these questions on Twitter, <laughs> like like uh, like why why is the UFC making so much more money than everyone else? Like is it is it like the structure of their TV deal? Uh, is it mm -hmm. is it because they're the only ones that actually sell pay per views in MMA? Because no, nobody else is gonna buy a pay per view that's not a UFC pay per view. Right. So, uh, like, wh what is it that makes the UFC their profit the most profit? I don't, I don't know the answer, but I want, I want to. Right now, it's probably the ESPN of... deal. Right now, it's probably their ESPN deal. I mean, I know that they get paid to, to basically, they, they, they basically do not have to worry about their pay per view sales anymore. Like, that's how much they're getting paid. Um, pay per view it, sales are that, cherry on top, but is that a lot more than the Fox deal. A lot more because I think they, they. Uh, I think they inked it like right after Connor came back. No, something like that. So it's the same thing when they were evaluated at four billion. It was like right after like Connor and everything like that. So or during the height of it. So it like was overvalued, and then Endeavor quickly realized, oh crap, they're not actually worth this much money. Um, so that was like a whole thing, but. Uh, I mean, it's got to be name value. The UFC alone sells bare minimum 100 to 120,000 pay-per-views, literally putting anybody on the main card yeah. and main event. Um, and they, 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 here's the thing. like, I, I want everything to get better for the fighters, but I right. think the UFC deserves some credit for getting us to this point. But I just don't think they're the people who at least now are going to take us further. I'm grateful for where we got, but we, need, we, need, we have a lot to go. We oh, yeah. So what do you think you so you're okay so pull yourself back and pull yourself back in time I guess what do you do differently if you're going there or, or are you going in the first place to the UFC yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay you're in the I mean, UFC what? what are you doing different with uh, regards to at least management and then you know the the monetary aspects as opposed to obviously changing fights and stuff that's something completely different yeah i mean i i don't i don't know what i could have done differently me personally like i got signed I, when i got signed i took the fight on 10 days notice right for the minimum contract they offer and which I was I'm, what 10 10 at the time 10 and 10 which I think is the same. I think it's the same now. As far I think as they I know. just. I think they just raised it to twelve twelve. The last card they did was the lowest was twelve twelve. So hoping they went up two grand each. You know, hopefully. I talked to my manager earlier today, and he said he he's heard of eight and eight, but uh, even now, but he's but uh, he just got a guy signed on that card, and it was twelve and twelve. Oh thank God! I was scared. But, but I, I was I, like, I 
know what the minimum is. But anyway, it, it, even if it went up to 12 and 12, I signed in 2013. Seven years later, it's ex- ex- pretty much exactly the same. So here's a question because this is, this is something. But, 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 sorry, sorry. I just no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, but I don't, I don't know what I would have changed. Like, when, when I, when I, when I, the fight before I signed for that 10 and 10, I made two and two. So, like, that was a huge jump up. And not the most I had made. I made a little bit more in Bellator. But, right. But I built, but as you win, your contract improves. And, you know, but it's they, also kind they, of just, isn't it just to, kind of the UFC taking advantage of the fact that other promotions are paying even worse and just saying, like, look how much money you're making per fight, but not really. Yeah, but but that's them being good business. Like they're offering, they they are offering pretty much the best situation that's available. Mm-hmm. But it's, but given what they actually make, it's not it's not what it should be. That that's the point I think we're all trying to make. You know, it's the best of a bad situation, really. Yeah. And to illustrate that, they pay roughly fifteen to eighteen percent of their revenue. Other major sports are paying fifty-ish or more. So that is where what he means. Oh, that's what that's what you mean by it's not where it should be considering what they're making. They're just not giving enough of a share of the revenue to the fighters. And it's that simple. And we don't have like like we we, we sign the contract, right? But it's not a guaranteed contract. Like they can, right. they give you one fight you lose and then you're it's a four fight deal, but they don't care. Like you don't, you're not guaranteed four fights. They can do whatever they want at any time mm-hmm. for any reason. It's and we're all like, "Please, UFC, <laughs> and it's true there's no i just said don't I cut me. there's no better there's no there's nothing better right now that's that's the problem that's what we're trying to change it but i would still take the best that's available you know mm-hmm. i wouldn't not take it just to spite them because i would still be hurting myself because i wouldn't be right. getting anything better what about your what are your thoughts on the show win in general i was speaking with gray and speaking with other people and they're kind of were like on the, they all agreed like you know show win is kind of stupid because you're basically like you're talking about half your paycheck going down the tube if you lose and it could be two asshole judges who just screw you out of half your paycheck but then there was also like also there's the thought of literally doubling your paycheck as opposed to maybe a little bit less of a show but it's guaranteed money yeah um so when when i did leave the ufc uh, and I was negotiating with a couple of different shows. Verizon was a show I was negotiating with. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is their standard way of uh, structuring their pay, but I thought it was a much better system. So they were offering me a higher flat rate than most of the other shows, but not a win bonus and not, not a 50-50 split. They were offering maybe like a 20 to 30% extra chunk for a finish. So, uh-huh. so it's, a, it's a little bit higher flat rate, and then a finish bonus. So, like, if I go for the finish and I lose, I don't lose any money. I I have the incentive not to win to, to finish, which would, I think, is, is a smart way to structure it. You know, like, if you want me to take, if I'm winning the fight and you want me to risk a finish, but I lose and I lose 50% of my money, I'm not sure how much that's worth, how much it's worth it. But if it's just the finish bonus and I lose nothing, if I get knocked out, I make the same. Or if I knock them out, I make more. The incentive structured a little different. Yeah. I think I think that's a smarter way to do it. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Like you're talking, they're, 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 right now I know that the UFC is doing a smaller cage to try and encourage more like action, I guess. Uh, but you know, what else would in, what incentivizes finishes if not literally paying you more to get a finish, rather than paying you more to win, which incentivizes you to win at any cost? I, this is a little side sidebar. I uh, I went to corner some friends in like a local show in New Jersey a couple of years ago, and we walk into the the venue and it is the smallest cage I've ever seen. I can't believe it. It's like, like if both guys put their feet on the cage and laid down, their heads would be touching each other. It was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And I was like, I was like, how small? I asked the promoter when we were backstage. I was like. I was like, how sm- how small is that cage out there? He's like, as small as they'll legally allow me to do to make it. And I'm like, holy awesome. shit! <laughs> <laughs> You're just fighting in a phone booth. Yeah. Did it lead to a shitload of finishes, or was it was just like uh, or the Randy Couture specials with when tons was, of cage spoiling? When I was telling my my guy, I'm like, listen, 
there's going to be no, like, keeping your distance. Like, as soon as you anyone throws, you're clinched. And if you take one step back, you're against the cage. Just, like, <laughs> forget any kind of idea about moving around. Because it's just not going to be there. <laughs> I just hope, I, I really hope this happened. Like, somebody took a swing, they ducked, and they accidentally just punched the cage wall because there was no room. Or something like that. That would have been pure comedy. Um, sorry, sorry for the sidebar. No, I love that. That's great. Uh, um, I mean, other other than you know, you had your personal experiences. We've talked about like kind of general things. Uh, are there any? Is there what advice, if you have any, would you give to fighters? I guess going into this because, like you said, you personally weren't the type of guy to go and hustle like Elias. You're definitely not a trash talker. I know you. Uh, what what can you do, I guess, to kind of like make sure you're secure as best as possible, other than literally working a second job? Uh, I mean, first, the advice is don't do it for money. You don't don't do this game for money. The chances of you like making a lot of money is very low, especially if you're a little guy. Uh, but. If you want to promote yourself and get out there, that, I think that can help, you know? Like, if you get a big following on social media, you can make money just, just off of that. And you use your platform as a fighter to... Use your platform as a fighter to do your real job of being a social media professional or whatever. Right. An influencer. <laughs> I, uh, I think Elias needs to add that to his Twitter bio. Yeah. Influencer. Yeah, for sure. Um... What? I don't know. Uh, basically, don't do this for money. Do it because you love it and pray to God that you do and that you make some money. Um, well, any uh, before I, I think we kind of would. Do you have any more Sean Shelby specific stories that you want to share? That like just where you're just like whoa, or those were really the only two instances. Yeah, that was it. Like. Oh, you know, okay. Here's here's something I might try uh, if 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 I got back into the UFC. What I might try to do more is cultivate more personal relationships with like Sean and some of the other people in charge, uh, yeah. Dana and them, because I pretty much like I didn't really interact with them mu much. Like only here at events, it's like small talk. Like we had no real relationship. You know, it was always through my manager. You know, which is what I prefer. I, like, I don't really want to make all those calls and do that. Like, I want to train and fight, and uh, my manager takes care of, like, my fight shorts and, and like, hustling for sponsors and getting, well, before Reebok days, getting, like, the banner made, getting my shorts printed, getting the shirts, everything, like, the core, all the everything for the core. Like, I don't want to be dealing with that. I'm cutting weight and training for a top ten guy in the world. Like, I, I want to deal with that. Uh, so maybe cultivating more personal relationships with those guys would have been would have been a good thing. But again, I mean, like, that's not what I was in it for. It just maybe could have maybe could help a little bit. I don't know. Kiss just a little bit more ass, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> well, I, we I'm love you. Saying, I'm not saying kiss her ass. I'm just saying like. Right. Just, just like. Don't be afraid to be like be their friend if you can. Although, right, they there's a good chance they might put you right in your place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not your fucking friend. I'm your fucking boss. Get the fuck out of here. Shit, <laughs> that would make that that, that would make it worse because then you're on your on the radar for all the wrong reasons too. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for uh, you know coming on talking about your experiences and talking about this really important issue because you all deserve to get paid properly. So, uh, any, anything you want to obviously shout out before you go, but, um, make sure you follow Zach at, at, on Twitter at Zach fun size, Z A C H fun size. Uh, I, you have an Instagram by the way, yeah. also uh, follow him on Instagram. Zach underscore underscore Makovsky. Um, any any sponsors you might want to shout out, by the way? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, Sorry. I think I think uh, I'm fighting with uh, Brave 
Combat Federation now, and I think awesome. they're going to they're going to be starting shows soon. And I think they're doing a flyweight tournament for the title, mm-hmm. and I am going to be part of it. So I think hopefully maybe end of August I'm looking to get back in there. So I'll be trying to ramp up training for that. So awesome. Support Brave. I've only had one fight with Brave, but so far they seem to have like their heart in the right place as a promotion. They 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 treated the fighters extremely well. Again, I've been with them one fight. I've had great experiences with one fight with a lot of promotions, but they I, I was really I was really happy with my experience with them. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Well, Con- contracts are the same though. <laughs> Well, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for your next fight. I know that. The Fight Site crew is behind you 100%. Uh, everyone, make sure that you go and show some support. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Twitter. Send him some love. Uh, when the interview drops, make sure you retweet it and send it out. Make sure we get a, keep the attention on this issue. Uh, obviously, we got to thank the people who are really fighting the good fight, people like Leslie Smith with Project Spearhead. People like, uh, you know, I know John Fitch is out there talking a lot about this. And Gray Maynard has, you know, graciously come on and talked to us too. And he is doing the rounds, making sure this is as well-known an issue as possible. Uh, another fight side friend, Curtis Blades, while in the UFC and at number three ranked heavyweight, is just like, yeah, I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> and I love it. So, he's, you know, hopefully more people follow suit. Um, everyone, make sure you check out thefightside.com. Make sure you check out the articles. Check us out on Patreon. Support us if you can. Hyperbrandfly.com. Make sure you click the link at the bottom of the fight site or any links we post on Twitter. Gets us. Uh, it really does help us out. YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, share it with your friends. And Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify are the podcasts. So make sure you check us out there. Leave us a five-star rating. really does help. Zach. Pleasure as always. Thank you so much. If, uh, if, you, if you guys love MMA, support the fighters who are putting their hearts and soul into this. And look, at, I, I'm not going to benefit from from pushing for this, but I want the next generation to be better off than we than we were. And I want the sport to get better. Like I said, on a global scale, I want more MMA to be profitable, and then things can start to change and become, I think, I think a lot better for everyone. There'll just be more money available for everyone to make. So. Uh, so support the fighters. They're the ones who are really putting it on the line and really uh, uh, not not getting what they're worth right now. So honestly, I couldn't think of a better way of putting it. That was a really good, succinct way of explaining. It's better for you if the fighters are doing better because then you guys can put more into it and aren't worrying about your futures and forget your futures. You're worrying about your present. So uh, support the fighters getting more pay because you'll you'll benefit too if 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 you have to have the selfish way of looking at it support fighters getting paid more so that you can enjoy more fights and better fights that's that's the the selfish view uh zach thanks again dude really awesome my pleasure man anytime